Hey guys, John Adamson, the Rehab and Documentation Guru, and we're going to be talking about the changing argument used against religious exemption to the shot. You know which shot I'm talking about. So we're continuing to visit this subject because the argument is evolving. So to kick off this discussion, and this happened earlier last week, when news agencies started reporting this story about Conway Regional Health System located in Arkansas that came out with this letter that was sent to their employees who are opting for the religious exemption. So we're going to be reading this particular notice that was sent out to the employees. Religious exemption attestation for COVID-19 vaccine. Based upon your religious exemption request, we ask you to complete the below attestation. This will help to validate your understanding of the, the ubiquity, that means common, very common, the ubiquity of the fetal cell use in the testing and development of common medica medicines and consumer products and support your claim of a sincerely held belief. The following is a list of common med medicines that have been used have used fetal cells in their development. This is a commonly used and available, but not all-inclusive list of everyday medicines that fall into the same category as the COVID-19 vaccine in their use of fetal cell lines. Now, what fell be beyond this list of medications was an attestation that you would, if you're an employee of Conway Regional Health System, in addition to being exempted from the COVID vaccine, you would uh, voluntarily exempt yourself from taking these same medicines. So we're going to examine the truthfulness of this Conway Regional Health System form that they sent out to their employees and, and see if what they're saying is true. First of all, let's talk about some of the fetal cell lines that are available and that are readily used for the development, testing, um, and testing of medicines. The first we're going to look at is WI-38. So WI-38 was, was developed from a three-month gestation female fetus. Um, by the way, fetus is just Latin for baby. So three-month uh, in the womb baby, and it was an elective abortion done in 1962. So this lady just decided to kill her baby just uh, as an elective surgery, but the cell line was not used with her permission. In other words, it was taken without her permission. This was a common problem in early um, fetal cell development that uh, the woman was never involved in the decision making. Well, she murdered her baby, so I guess you know it doesn't really matter the ethics at that point, does it? Um, sorry if that offends you, that line, but um, I don't retract it. So anyway, what kinds of things have come from WI-38? Well, it says that it's been used in the production of vaccines, and you'll see that there are a number of diseases that are covered by this uh, cell line the vaccines were developed from. Uh, most importantly, we probably would notice MMR, measles, mumps, and rubella. Although, and we're going to talk a little bit about this, uh, those vaccines were available prior to the MMR vaccine without the use of fetal tissue. So, Let's, uh, let's go on from there. So first we're going to talk about the HeLa line. So this HeLa line was interesting in that at first it came out in 1951. So it's one of the oldest lines of cells. In fact, the oldest one I found. And this one was actually taken from a living human being who had cancer. A um, young black female whose uh, cells were used without her permission. And then this de that developed the HeLa line. So she was not dead. So no, nobody was murdered to take this uh, cell line and propagate it. You'll note that one of the things that it was used for was the development of the polio vaccine. And, 
1985, strides towards cancer research started to be made um, at that time. So this is um, perhaps one of the more ethical lines you're going to find. Uh, the main issue with uh, ethical use of this was, again, it was not taken with the lady's permission. Next, we look at MRC5. And this is a little bit newer. It was developed in 1966 from a 14-week fetus. By the way, fetus is just Latin for baby. Aborted for psychiatric reasons. This is often utilized, and you'll hear like the health of the mother. Pa baby was aborted because of the health of the mother often used to circumvent the discussion of the life of the mother. And um, it's currently used in the production of, and notice it says hepatitis A, varicella, and polio. So polio has some crossover. So if you decide to get the polio vaccine, especially for your children, uh, if you have not gotten it, uh, it might be worthwhile looking into who's developed the polio vaccine and from, from what line, because that might have a bearing in the one that you choose. Now we're getting into one of the more famous lines. What's interesting is I only found it specifically stated it was used in the AstraZeneca vaccine for COVID, um, but we don't use the AstraZeneca here. So um, the HEC-293 though has been brought up in the research and development of the other uh, vaccines. But HEC-293 came about in 1973 from a, an aborted, or miscarried. Now, it's it's interesting to note, we don't know if the child was aborted or miscarried. So if the child was miscarried, then the production of the HEC-293 line presents perhaps not much ethical dilemma. The problem is we don't know, right? So if you are of the opinion that you just don't know, um, and therefore you don't want to trust the two, HEC-293. I totally understand that, um, but this is another line of cells. Now, for those of us that have had a religious objection under the anti-abortion perspective in our lives, this one does present much greater difficulty for us. And this is the per C6 line. Um, this is utilized by the Johnson Johnson vaccine. This is an actual quote related to the uh, the obtaining of the cells that developed this particular line. So I isolated retina from a fetus, from a healthy fetus, as far as could be seen, of 18 weeks old. There was nothing special with the family history or the pregnancy, was completely normal up to the 18 weeks. And it turned out to be a socially indicated abortus, abortus provocatus. And that was simply because the woman wanted to get rid of the fetus. So this was clearly a case for those of us who are anti-abortion of murder. And it does present a greater concern. And of course, the Johnson & Johnson uh, vaccine has not only been cited for its greatest use of abortive tissue in its research and development, but it's also proven one of the most problematic in terms of side effects and the least effective of the vaccines as well. Now I've given you a couple examples of recent articles, and I'm talking very recent within the last week or two, of, of those who are saying that religious exemptions should not be used, or you have problems uh, if you try to use that argument with a lot of medicine. Um, so one, as you can see says, and this is the title, there are no aborted fetal cells in vaccines. Now that was something that I never claimed. And I know a lot of people who are exempting themselves from taking the vaccine have never claimed that there's actually aborted cells in the vaccines. Uh, we have argued though, that there are aborted cells used in the development of the vaccines. Here's an article from a Catholic. If any drug tested on HEC-293 is immoral, goodbye modern medicine. So now we're seeing that we're actually um, pinpointing a specific cell line, HEC-293. And, um, and I can tell you that this particular person, their article mirrors the, the uh, 
handout that was sent to the employees of that Arkansas hospital system. In fact, the list looks practically the same. So I thought we would start looking at different medications that are on the list. And, the que and what was posited by this hospital system was that these drugs on their list were dependent upon cell lines from aborted fetal tissue um, in, order to in order to produce them, the development of these drugs. So first on our list is Tylenol. Now, when I saw the claim that Tylenol was um, required the, de the development based upon fetal cell lines, I knew that was a bunch of baloney. Um, so when did acetaminophen, which is obviously the, the generic name for Tylenol, first come about? First described in medical literature back in 1878. Um, so at least a little more, almost uh, about 75 years actually. 75 years earlier than the first fetal cell line was actually developed. And notice when its safety and effectiveness was recognized. The very year that the first fetal cell uh, line was developed, and that was the one that was developed from cervical cancer cells from a live living human being. So um, what do we have here? We, first of all, why was it developed back in 1878? Because it was recognized as a pain reliever. So its, its clinical effectiveness in reducing pain was well established even before 1951. Um, safety and effectiveness recognized. That, so they got around to saying, okay, well, we recognize this is good. And it started to be really developed commercially. As you can see, 1955 is a children's analgesic. Um, it's pretty safe to say that they were, that list from that hospital, Conway Hospital, uh, that list mentioning Tylenol is inaccurate. Now, what happened with Tylenol? Well, it, ha it has been tested after the fact upon fetal tissue lines. But uh, for the development of it, wasn't needed. So next on the list, Pepto-Bismol. So when I saw that named on the Conway Hospital, Conway Regional Hospitals list, I thought another baloney statement. There was no way that cell lines were used in the production and development of Pepto-Bismol and true enough, they were not. 1900 or 1901 is when it first came out. And in, by 1919, it was already being marketed as Pepto-Bismol. And the effects that it's claimed to have are similar and the same to what we have today. We didn't need any fetal tissue to be tested to determine its efficacy in dealing with a little bit of stomach issues. Another medicine we can call baloney on that list as being um, developed or processed through the use of fetal cell lines, aspirin. It says even in 1899, the name aspirin came into effect, but in 1876, they already knew it helped with things like fever, joint inflammation. Um, and by 1950, I know you can't see all of that, but for one full year before we even had the first cell line, they already knew it was the most frequently sold painkiller. So again, aspirin has been tested in subsequent studies, but did not rely in its development upon fetal cell lines. Tums, 1928. Do we need to go any further with that one? Lipitor. Now, let me say something about statins. As a whole, they're probably my least favorite product. One of the things that, um, one of the reasons that Lipitor and other statins came out was because of the vilification of cholesterol, and more specifically, LDLs and Thing, looking at things like triglycerides and LDL to HDL ratios and yada, yada, yada. More recent studies have started to suggest that, you know, maybe we need cholesterol. In fact, um, it's estimated, last I uh, did some reading up on this, 
that about three quarters of the cholesterol in your body is actually produced by your body, not ingested. And if your body's making it, it needs it. Now, obviously, there's problems with with uh, cholesterol deposition, especially you know within arteries. However, um, I don't like statins. I've had a lot of patients in my career who have had issues with the statins they've taken. Uh, with that said, it is a more recent invention, and it is well within the time period that we had fetal cell lines. Um, I could not, though, find anything to suggest that the only way it came about was through testing on fetal tissue. So the uh, references I found on one of those um, articles about the use of uh, fetal cell lines and testing Lipitor actually came after its development. Um, so, and, and one of the problems with Lipitor is that is it is the most prescribed medication. I would say probably, probably after um, COVID shots, it's it's the most prescribed medication now. But um, it is a huge cash cow for its pharmaceutical company. Um, so anyway, is it possible that Lipitor was developed using fetal uh, cell lines? I can't tell. I've tried looking up as much as I could. I couldn't find anything specific. Um, it may not be like the other ones have proven. Now we are at a medicine that is confirmed to have been developed from use of fetal cell lines, the MMR vaccine. Um, so this came out, the MMR came out about a year before I was born. 19, oh wait a minute, it says it was licensed for use in 1971, but I'd read somewhere else that it was out in 67. But um, anyway, it's been around for a while. And they did use, as you can see, the MRC5 um, cell lines in the production of the varicella component of the MMR and the rubella component. Now you've got uh, MMR slash V, I think. Um, so there's the varicella is, is contained in that one. And the rubella virus strand was, uh, they specifically used the WI38 cells. So when you're talking about exempting yourself on the basis of aborted cell lines uh, from the COVID vaccines, you do have to think about, you know, utilizing the same uh, reasoning behind the MMR. By the way, what's interesting is that there used to be singular uh, vaccines for measles, mumps, and rubella. And from what I can read up on those, they did not use fetal tissue lines to develop. Um, they used attenuated viruses, uh, weakened uh, viruses, and uh, from what I was finding in my reading. And so therefore, they would be ethical. Unfortunately, the United States has, um, as far as I could tell, rid itself of singular measles, mumps, or rubella um, shots. By the way, measles, mumps, and rubella all have the capability of killing you but the, the likelihood of death is extremely low. Um, but it is a potential factor and it does tend to make people pretty sick. Now guys, I'm just giving you, um, to kind of start to wrap this up, I'm giving you a brief uh, rundown of some of these other medicines. Senecot. Um, <laughs> Senecot's been known since the 700s AD. So to say that research and development, I, I shouldn't say the name brand Senecot, but the Senna plant and its effects have been known for hundreds of years. So to say that it was developed using fetal cells, incorrect. Um, Zygris, this is a sepsis drug. And what I could find in the literature is that the efficacy of it is questionable unless you're very ill, severe sepsis. And, and most likely, most of us would not be administered Zygris. What about Motrin and ibuprofen? Um, I thought this had been around forever and a day, but um, it actually was developed in the 50s and 60s as a safer alternative to aspirin, um, interesting enough. And we know that um, in young children, aspirin, you're not supposed to give them aspirin. 
Um, there's a uh, the potential for, uh, I'm blanking on the name of the, is it Ray's syndrome or Ray's? Um, anyway, there is a, there's the potential for certain age groups to not um, handle aspirin very well. Um, however, again, the development of Motrin and ibuprofen, I couldn't find anything to suggest that it was reliant on fetal tissue to develop it. Has it been tested on fetal tissue since then? Yes. What about Malox? First developed in 1949, two full years, first introduced two full years before we even isolated and, and propagated a cell line. Xlax, 1906. Benadryl, 1946. Pseudofed's mentioned on there, but pseudofedrine, from which pseudofed comes, 1889. Now, this was interesting to me, albuterol, and it got me a little nervous for a second because I'm very reliant on that medicine as an asthmatic. It was patented in 1972, and one of the articles I cited earlier uh, on in this little presentation um, had citations that showed that these drugs were all you know, tested on fetal cell lines, but the citations for the studies were 2000 and 2015. In other words, albuterol was already developed well before it was tested on fetal cell lines. And what about ivermectin? Oh, that's that's a touchy one, ivermectin. All, all you fellow horse paste takers out there. Ivermectin, uh, 2004 and 2006 studies. Uh-oh, but guess what? It came into medical use for human beings in 1981. So well before it was ever tested on fetal cell lines. Now I could have continued going on that list and, and frankly, it was getting kind of long in the tooth and I wanted to get this out as soon as possible because you know what's happening right now, folks? We're going to see more systems like Conway Regional Medical starting to try to apply this litmus test to their employees and say, look, if you want to be exempted because of fetal cell lines from taking COVID vaccines, these are the other medicines you have to promise to not take. But here's a more insidious concern. What if insurance companies decide that based on your exemption from the COVID vaccine, that they are not going to cover any medication, which in some of those on that list were um, insurance covered medications like albuterol, they might say, well, I'm sorry, but we're not going to pay for any of these because you've exempted yourself religiously from the uh, COVID vaccines. Therefore, you've forfeited your coverage for these other medications. That's, that's a little bit concerning for me. You, whenever you see these further pushbacks, um, related to the COVID vaccines, you got to think about their next tactic. What are they going to go after next? I have a feeling it's going to be stuff like that. So what are some conclusions that we can draw from what we've looked at between Conway Regional Medical and um, these articles that have been written um, and further fights that we're going to see in the future related to this? Uh, first of all, we can say that the religious exemption for COVID vaccinations has hinged in part upon the fact that they use fetal cell lines in the testing and development of the vaccines. So, um, and th this next one builds up, builds from that. The use of the fetal tissue was integral in the development and or production of the vaccines, such that they would not have been, have made it to market without such use of that tissue. We would not have the COVID vaccines without the testing on fetal cell lines. Whereas I've just showed you, we would have the majority of that list of medications, we would have them without the use of fetal cell line. We would still have them. They would have come to market. We would have known their clinical effectiveness without being further tested um, very easily. Also, it is clear that health organizations are seeking, actively seeking to find new and evolving arguments to remove religious objections to the taking of the vaccinations. Because unfortunately, some people are gonna see lists like Conway Regional Medicals or the art, other article I cited. They're gonna see those lists and they go, they're gonna go, well, I need, you know, Maalox to make it through the day. I need my albuterol inhaler. 
I I need my uh, my ibuprofen. You know, whatever it might be, they're going to see that list and they're going to go, well, gosh, if I can't exempt myself from those, then maybe I should go ahead and take the vaccine. And I believe that that's a false premise to base your decision on. What other conclusions do we have? It is clear that most of the medications listed as being tested upon fetal tissue were not dependent upon fetal tissue research to bring it originally to market, nor necessary to develop the drug, nor was testing needed to determine its effect upon these people. Like, I, like you saw, you know, for example, aspirin, its effects were well known. Peptobismol effects were well known prior to the use of fetal tissue upon that drug for further research purposes. You know, it is possible though, to my point number two here, that at some point, all medicines known to man could be taken and tested upon fetal cell lines. That does not mean that we are morally culpable for taking that medicine just because it was tested upon fetal cell lines. We are having to think about though medications like the COVID vaccines when they came into effect because of testing on fetal cell lines. That's an important distinction. I also um, want to make it clear that it is essential that Christians and other religious objectors consider reviewing the research behind the development and production of the medications they intend to take. Because, um, you know, we do have a responsibility as, as a believer in God created for a purpose. You know, I'm saying this as I'm drinking coffee, which is probably not the smartest thing, but to be a little bit more careful about what we put into our body. And, and think about the consequences to our body. Um, you know, I ta I've talked openly about the fact that obesity kills more people than COVID. And, um, and we have an obesity problem in the United States. And there's a lot of stuff we put in our mouth that leads to that. We need to be mindful of what we put into our bodies. It, it, if we're a Christian, we believe our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit who dwells within us. So we should be thinking about what we're doing to our bodies in that regard. So how do we respond to these conclusions that we've drawn? First of all, I think we need to challenge every challenge. We need to go on the offense, defend and offend. <laughs> challenge every challenge to our religious liberties and religious convictions that guide us. Uh, remember what Conway Regional Hospital said. They said that the fetal cell lines were part of the development of those commonly used drugs. And what did we prove? Big baloney on that for most all of them. Yes, we could definitely say like the MMR vaccine. Definitely the, the fetal cell line was needed in that case. But all the other ones we looked at, big baloney on that. Also, we wanna make sure that we investigate every claim against religious exemption to ensure accuracy and truthfulness, which I kinda of just touched base on. And again, not truthful, not accurate. We wanna also though, folks, and this is something that I'm gonna be looking into more, cause you know, frankly, I'm fully committed to this fight. I am fully committed and um, I'm going to keep um, looking at other avenues that a religious objector or even a conscientious objector can look at to argue their right to be exempted from the vaccines. Because there are, besides the abortive fetal lines, there are other plausible well thought out arguments we can look at. Well, maybe they're not always well thought out. We tend to focus on the abortive cell lines mostly, but there are other avenues we can use to respond and say, my belief system will not allow me under good conscience to take this vaccine due to, and those are the kind of kinds of arguments we need to develop. Well, guys, I wanna thank you for watching this video. 
Um, as you know, I put time and effort into, well, most of my videos. <laughs> Um, some of them are kind of impromptu, but there are videos like this one where I actually spend time researching and developing and then, of course, recording. You see this, and it'll be roughly, it'll be a little over 30 minutes, but it took me closer to 45 minutes or so, or maybe closer to an hour. I don't even know what the time is um, because of redos on recording of the slides. But anyway, if you would consider supporting uh, my efforts, I'd greatly appreciate it. If you've gotten any value at what I've done, I've given you my Venmo um, because I'm, I'm still trying to figure out this whole Patreon thing, uh, but Venmo is easy. <laughs> so if you scan that code on your screen, um, if I've given you value, um, then any support you provide is greatly appreciated. Or if you can't do that, I understand because I will continue to do this regardless because I care about all of our religious liberty. Thank you for watching. John Adams and the Rehab and Documentation Guru. Have a good night. Take care. God bless.